It's a principle. The more deeply you're convinced that the Bible is truly God's Word, the more you're going to be excited about reading it, learning it, and most importantly, implying it to your life. So let me give you three ideas that will deepen your conviction that the Bible is God's Word. Now before I do that, it's important to point something out. Reasons to believe can be both personal and universal. Now what I mean by that is those of us who believe have very personal reasons for believing that may not necessarily be meaningful to someone else. That can include profound answers to prayer we've seen in our lives or meaningful experiences we've had with the presence of God or we feel like God spoke to us very directly while we were reading the Bible. Now on the other hand, Universal reasons are those things which most people can relate to or hopefully see and, and they'll say to themselves, yeah, that's, that's a good reason to believe. An example of that would be like the historical evidence for Jesus' resurrection from the dead. The three reasons I'm going to share that I think the Bible is the Word of God are maybe a mix of the universal and personal, keeping in mind that there's great resources out there that can give you more universal reasons and answer questions like, how do you know that what we have today was what was originally written down? And I think there's a lot of people that have that question, uh, but I'd prefer you go to people who are a lot smarter than me to give you answers to questions like that. These are reasons that have surfaced in my life that are meaningful to me and may just be to you. Number one, the Bible is a great combination of the personal and the universal which sounds like something we just said. Well, this means it has personal stuff and universal stuff about it. For instance, the Bible includes firsthand accounts of people who have encountered God, uh, their emotions and their thoughts about that experience with Him. And these experiences are consistent over large amounts of time with different people. They're all encountering the same God, so to speak. Uh, people who encounter God in the Bible often have this strong sense of His power, His greatness, combined with moral purity and authority. And this typically results in them falling on their face, feeling very morally unworthy. So in the Bible, that's very, very personal. It also records prayers and stories that tell the truth about people's emotions. Now at the same time, it's not all about subjective personal experiences. It's not what we might label a merely spiritual book. It's history. It's about God dealing with the nation of Israel. It has Paul's letters to the churches, Jesus teaching the crowds, and there's archaeological and historical testimony that backs up that these events happened. Side note on that, if you have the means at any time in your life, go to the Holy Land at some point in your life. It will revolutionize your view of the Bible and go a long way towards convincing you that it's telling the truth about the people and the places and the events that it records. So it has both, what we might call the existential and the evidential, just like life has both. Reason number two I've found for trusting the Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is filled with poetic and intelligent expression. Here's what I mean by that. Now, some of the greatest minds who ever lived were Bible scholars, and it serves as the foundation of Western civilization. I think that's important to note because people think the Bible is kind of this backwoods, podunk book associated with TV preachers and country churches. While that reputation is partly earned in the U.S., the idea is really misleading and, frankly, inaccurate. Great artistic minds have found their muse, so to speak, in the Bible. Think of great literary figures like Milton, Dante, Shakespeare, Tolkien. That's just naming a very, very few. All of them were inspired by and framed by the Bible in their own belief system. Then you have amazing scholars like Augustine, Aquinas, William of Ockham, Calvin, Isaac Newton, Johannes Kepler, James Clerk Maxwell. All of them were profoundly influenced by and respecters of the Bible. These people saw the Bible as something profoundly intelligent. Now also when I use the word poetic, I'm talking simply about the literary quality of the Bible itself. I remember reading an interview with Anthony Flew. Now he was kind of the top atheist name in the mid to late 20th century in the same way like Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris, maybe for our time. He made a great comment about the Bible. He said this, the Bible is a work which someone who had not the slightest concern about the question of the truth or falsity of the Christian religion could read as people read novels of the best novelist. It is an eminently readable book. Meaning on just a pure literary level, it's great stuff. And he's right. The stories are deep, rich, even entertaining. Did you know that the book of Job is considered by literary critics and, and historians to be one of the greatest poems of the ancient world? Uh, one of the reasons most of us know something about the stories in the Bible like David and Goliath or Daniel and the lions did is because they're great stories. Movies have been made from Bible stories. And think about this. In the Bible we're presented with the person of Jesus who's the most influential and admired person who ever lived. And his story is the best known story there is and has been rightly called the greatest story ever told. If God were to breathe out a book, I believe it would have those characteristics. Reason number three I've found for trusting the Bible is the Word of God is what I would call 
ethical power. So every now and then my wife and I would take one of those vacations where you laid on the beach and pretty much just read books the whole time, occasionally getting up to go get something to eat. One of those times, I hope you've had those. I, I decided to make my read during that time, going through the New Testament letters back to back, no stops, beginning with Romans all the way through Revelation. Just read one after the other in order. Now the reason I did this is I wanted to hear without the chapter breaks or devotional breaks, what they sounded like. See, often we read verses in, in isolation. I wanted to hear it as it flowed out, which by the way is something I highly recommend if you've ever found yourself sitting on the beach with nothing to do, but read, okay. So I loved it, I, I learned a ton, but the greatest takeaway I had was that these writers were the real deal. Now whatever you think about their beliefs, they believe what they were saying. They come across as absolutely authentic and ethical. Does that mean they were right? No. People can be sincerely wrong. But here's the problem. They come off as more ethical, not less ethical than the reader. You know, I was thinking the whole time, I'm not on a moral level with these people. Really, our entire culture isn't. Uh, you could feel this moral clarity and force in their lives. They were talking passionately and sincerely without much reward for doing it at all. Most of them were persecuted. So it's very hard to say they were making something up when you can just tell that they're the kind of people who don't make things things up. Now stay tuned for more reasons we can trust that the Bible is the Word of God, but to be crystal clear on why talking about this even matters, check out this video. Hope that helps. See you next time.